Hey guys, welcome to this behind the scenes video for Poison. If you haven't watched the actual video yet, you might want to go do that first. Link is in the description. Hopefully this will give you some insight to how I design profiles and the work that goes into the videos. For Poison, I started with the video thumbnail. I don't always start here, but it can be helpful if I already have something in mind. In this case, I already knew the background color and the font I wanted for the title. It was just a matter of choosing the subtitle font and layering in other effects. I design all of my thumbnails in a master file, so I can constantly check them for consistency with my previous videos. To create the profile itself, I started with the duplicate of the classic version and built the new Poison up from that. The original had become one of my most popular profiles and videos, so I really needed to do it justice. I decided to make it similar to Corrosive by designing bubbles into the profile using ripples set off at different times but limited to a certain area on the keyboard. There is always a lot of fine tuning involved as I'm a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to my designs, especially when it comes to color correction across different hardware. I won't ever release a profile if I don't think it's good enough. The time it takes to create a profile varies greatly depending on the complexity or how stuck I am for ideas. For Poison, the actual creation only took about an hour and a half. My home studio set consists of a black photography screen draped over a small table and two soft lights. Having both lights helps me to balance the lighting out and by pointing them at the ceiling, I can minimize any harsh reflections showing up on camera. I also have a small table underneath to keep the keyboards in when I'm not using them. The camera I use for my videos is a Sony a7 with a 28 to 70 millimeter lens. I bought this camera specifically for its low light capabilities as it suits the keyboards really well. Despite this, I still keep everything reasonably well lit. This is because I not only want to show off the profile, but all the details of the keyboards as well, as it makes it so much more interesting to look at in a video than just some lights in the dark. When switching between devices, I always wipe and dust them because even the smallest details are gonna show up on camera. If there's a shot I think of in the moment, I'll include it. But for the most part, my recording follows a bit of a pattern. I try to keep my recording process fairly consistent with the shots and the order I take them in. This way, I'm making sure I have enough footage of each device to use them interchangeably. Music selection is not something people think about, but it can be one of the longest processes I go through. I have spent anywhere from a few hours to entire days going through individual songs before. I'm always looking for a particular sound when it comes to each video I make, and it's not always possible to find the perfect song, but I try to get as close as I can every time. I'd like to give a shout out to the No Copyright Sounds and Argo Fox YouTube channels, as they've proven to be the most consistent place to find good music. If you want to check them out, there's links in the description. I use Adobe After Effects for my video editing, because not only is it the program I'm most comfortable with, but also I love the fine level of detail and control I have over everything. Its only downside for me is the lack of real-time previewing like Adobe Premiere can, but I find the control I get vastly outweighs this. I always want to make a good first impression with my videos, so I spend a lot of time on my title sequences. And over the past few months working on the Spectrum Pack, I discovered a few new tools and techniques to make these introductions really stand out. I always try to make sure that my videos don't overstay their welcome, but are also interesting from the very beginning. I mostly avoid static tripod shots in my videos now because of this, as I feel like the handheld shots, even if only moving a little bit, are much more interesting to watch. I use a small amount of warp stabilization on my shots for that extra level of polish. I'm constantly going through and changing little details that only I might ever notice, but I like these videos to be as professional as possible, even if it means spending more time on them than I perhaps otherwise should. When putting clips together, I always try to alternate devices so that every keyboard and mouse gets screen time. This also shows off the profile on as many devices as possible. I don't do any color correction in my videos as I want things to be as genuine as possible. I'd hate for somebody to download my profile only for it to look completely different in real life. Similar to the thumbnail, I also design all of my icons and backgrounds in a master file. Not only does this help keep things consistent, but it also allows me to create them at a much faster rate. I hope this is an interesting look behind the scenes for you. And if you still don't have the profile, you can find the download link on my website, along with all the previous profiles I've created.
If you liked this video or enjoyed my profiles, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. You can also tweet me at Lewis Gershwitz or join my Discord server. There's a link in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can also donate through Patreon or PayPal. As always, thanks for watching, guys.